Today is Friday, April 10th. Welcome to this edition of Nevada County Now. We'll start today with a COVID update. At the time of filming, Nevada County Public Health lists 34 confirmed cases of COVID-19, 24 in eastern Nevada County, and 10 in western Nevada County. For the most up-to-date information, visit mynevadacounty.com slash coronavirus. Nevada County farmers and ranchers are invited to attend an informative webinar and roundtable discussion regarding how Nevada County agriculture can t continue to provide safe and healthy food for our community while remaining economically viable. Guest speakers from the federal, state, and local level will be on hand to discuss their roles and support programs during this difficult time. The information on how to join the webinar through Zoom will be posted in this video's description. Many people are now getting a large amount of their food delivered to their homes. Here are a few tips to help mitigate the chance of infection when receiving these deliveries. Take a few minutes to create a safe food environment when the food arrives by cleaning any surfaces it will touch. Pay a, and tip in advance to minimize person-to-person -person interaction with the driver or restaurant takeout clerk. Let the driver leave the food at the doorstep and wait until the driver is at least six feet away before picking up the food. Remove the food from the takeout bags or containers and dispose of or recycle them appropriately. After disposing of packaging, wash your hands for 20 seconds with soap and water. And wipe counters and other surfaces where you unpack the food. Easter is this Sunday, and it's usually a time to gather with friends and family in celebration. This year, however, gathering in person is not recommended. It is better to stay home, leaving parties for another day when we are not threatened by this pandemic. You can enjoy your family and friends at a distance by calling them on the phone or using a video chat service like Zoom, Skype, or Google Hangouts. If we all follow the direction of the public health officials, fewer people will get sick or need medical care, and we'll get back to normal activities sooner. And for those of you concerned about missing your church service this Sunday, we have a few solutions. Many organizations are streaming their Easter services to Facebook and YouTube, and our cable programming relies on them submitting their content, and while we're not streaming any live services, we do program weekly services and programs from several local churches. These can be found on Comcast Channel 11 and Suddenlink Channel 16 on Sunday mornings. A sampling includes, this week at 7 a.m., the Bethel Church, The Call to Christian Music. At 8 a.m. will be Nevada City Methodist Church, at 9 a.m., Compass Community Church. At 10 a.m., Bethel Church. 11 a.m., Word Alive. And at noon, Transformations Unlimited. Now let's hear from Cindy Wilson from Nevada County Public Health with some information on our public health department. We actually have a big role, both locally, statewide, and nationally, here in our Nevada County Public Health Department. This is not a complete surprise to us. We have a lot of people who work here that are professionals who've been training and learning and getting ready for a situation such as COVID-19 for a very long time. We have our health officer, a doctor, who has a lot of training in this area. We have a team of nurses, one who focuses specifically on communicable disease, but the rest of of us who come in and support her as the workload increases. We also have an epidemiologist, so she looks at how things spread, what's happening in our community, uses a lot of data and statistics to track things. And then in addition to that, we have an emergency preparedness coordinator here in public health. And this is one of the things that is essential for our preparedness, is preparing for a communicable disease outbreak such as COVID-19. So our plans are in action. We're meeting daily to stay informed, to, to see what's happening in this emerging and evolving situation and make sure that we're doing the best we can to ensure that our motto works. Our, motto, our mission is to protect lives, prevent disease, and promote health. And so in the midst of this COVID-19, we are here, we're doing that, we're working to keep our community safe and healthy during this time. 
Okay, so there's actually a lot of things going on. Uh, we definitely have plans that have been in place for a long time. This isn't uh, something that we're totally unprepared for. It's something that we've been planning for and working towards and getting ready for, not even knowing that when it was gonna happen or how it was gonna happen. So we have a public health officer. So he's a, a doctor and he provides a lot of guidance around all of the issues related to this and answers questions from the community and is helping the community at large to be ready for um, perhaps something in schools or perhaps something in nursing homes. We also have an emergency preparedness coordinator and so that's part of her job is to help our community get ready for this type of situation. We have a nurses who are on our staff, public health nurses. One is focused on communicable disease control and this is obviously taking a lot of her time right now. Um, and then we have other nurses who can come in and support her as the work gets busy and busier around this so it's not a surprise to us we're ready but we are ramping up our efforts to keep our community safe and healthy during this time when there's a little bit more threat from something specific currently the COVID-19 virus. Good to know Cindy and thank all of you at Public Health for your tireless work to keep us safe and healthy. We'll leave you today with a video from our series Healthy Wealthy and Wise titled Where the Magic Happens. Hope you enjoy. And remember, stay safe, take care of each other, and we'll see you on Monday. personal development. Where does magic happen? I saw a picture once. There was a big circle labeled comfort zone. And off to the side, there was a little circle labeled where magic happens. Okay, I get that. Magic happens outside of the comfort zone. Where else does magic happen? What has the power to raise a barn, literally or figuratively, feed our souls, help us find vitality, affect real big change, and raise a lot of money for amazing causes? Community. Community is where magic happens. Magic for the world and magic for engaged community members. What is community? In my mind, it is a group of people who have something in common that unites them. There's the geographic community, whom they see when they're out shopping or getting coffee, the great neighborhood or even the city. They're the people who share a background or practice in common. For example, the Spanish-speaking community, the Unitarian community, the swimming community. Getting involved with our communities is one of the best things we can do for both ourselves and our world. The potential power of community is huge. Volunteer with community and raise a barn, literally or figuratively. Break bread with community and we feed our souls recreate with community, and we find vitality. Vote with community, and we can be part of a real big change. Pool community resources, and the fundraising possibilities come alive. Sports boosters can fund an athletic program. A capital campaign can remodel an art center, like here in Grass Valley. And GoFundMe pages contribute to life-saving medical treatments for community members. It's all pretty magical, but if we're lucky enough to be caring, aware, and involve community members, we might find that the magic for us is how community can forge us as leaders. My favorite leaders have focused on improving the lives around them, the lives of people with whom they are united by a common background. This focus on community is what launched them into leadership. Because I'm a proud Californian, the two examples I'm going to give today are California elected officials. In 1990, a smart young Latino man from an economically poor San Fernando Valley family began the mechanical engineering program at MIT. Now, MIT is groundbreaking. 
in many ways. And not just because it educates the top tech students from around the world. In the early 1980s, MIT began a Hispanic student recruitment program involving students, alumni, and admissions officers. So, alongside of his tough engineering education, this man got involved in this recruitment of fellow members of his ethnic community. He spoke at high schools and worked telethons, remember telethons, to spread the word that this world-class education was, as they may not have heard, available to them. Back in SoCal after graduation, this man worked as an engineer at Hughes Aircraft, but continued and escalated his involvement in the San Fernando Valley. He cut his teeth on his first political campaign and realized that it was politics, not rocket science, that gave him the ability to help his community the most. As a rising leader in Los Angeles, he took on such issues as curbing gang violence, maintaining the integrity of the local college board, and reopening a closed power plant so that his neighborhood could have more jobs and more power. Fast forward through a magically steep rise through the ranks, and this man is now California Secretary of State, Alex Padilla. He advises aspiring leaders, pick something that you truly care about and get involved because you can make an impact in your community, large or small. My other example is a woman who credits her community service to growing up with the Girl Scouts. But her trajectory as a leader began in earnest while she was an accountant at a big six accounting firm and she realized that there were no women in the accounting leadership. So she started her own firm and she joined the Asian Business Association and Small Business Association and started lobbying for issues that affected her communities of female and minority professionals. Her work helped lead to socially responsible contracting for women and minorities in San Francisco. And she realized the power of government to create positive change. While she was still a professional accountant, she found she spent the most of her time using her skills to help others in a part-time side role as a state senator's staffer. She would help constituents figure out complicated employment and payroll issues for the, the state senator. Finally, in 2002, she gave into the call of public service as a leader in the San Francisco community, working toward concrete laws of inclusion in business. She climbed the magical ladder, and in January this year, she was sworn in as California State Treasurer Fiona Ma. She advises aspiring leaders to listen to their hearts. Look, I don't want to knock ambition. Ambition drives people to be better, to be doers rather than to be just dreamers. But hunger for power and status and personal success, naked ambition, if you will, is definitely a driving force of many leaders. And as anyone who has binge watched House of Cards knows, it can be dangerous. Nakedly ambitious people, and I'm not going to name names, can cultivate themselves to seem caring, but when judging a leader at election time, take a look at their backgrounds. Was their first foray into community leadership the reframing of a personal, professional, and political background specifically to give an appearance of empathy with the masses and win an election or appointment? Or was it rooted in true, caring community involvement? There's an important difference in attitude, a difference that I think should transcend partisan politics. One says, look, I'm one of you, so I know your priorities, and I'm most likely to vote the same way you would on issues. Elect me. The other says, look, I'm one of you, I know your priorities, and through my dedication to you, I've exhausted what I can do for this community as a private citizen, so help me do more. I know who would get my vote. A 2013 article by the Atlantic Monthly proclaims that relationships are more important than ambition. It profiled people who prioritize social connections and people who are fueled by personal ambition. 
and found that social connections, including ties to friends and neighbors and civic engagement, were independently and robustly related to happiness and life satisfaction. Perhaps becoming a leader through community involvement rather than personal ambition to achieve power is more rewarding not only to the community, but to the individual as well. Google Dictionary defines magic as the power of apparently influencing the course of events by mysterious or supernatural forces. The power contained in a community, whether latent or activated, is enormous, supernatural and related to any one individual. For those individuals who care so much that they'll dedicate themselves, their lives, to helping positively influence their community's course, may the magic happen for them, and may it lift these treasured souls into inspired leadership. Thank you.